Okay, my name is Alicia Horn, and I work at the Assemblies of God National Office in Springfield, Missouri. Um, and I am here to talk with you about, well, how do you get kids to remember what you taught them the week before, right? So um, in our last session, session one, we talked about, I think it was the top five ways. So I'm going to go over those really quickly if you weren't here. And, um, and also want to let you know that this PowerPoint that I have, bless you, that's pretty hardy. <laughs> okay, so the PowerPoint, all of my notes, which is like 10 pages of really detailed notes, as well as the notes that you have in your hand if you don't have one, there's a fill in the blank here. Um, you are welcome to take them. Um, if you email me, I'd be happy to give them to you so you can take them back to your church and talk with some other people about uh, this information. So, okay, for those of you who were here, since most of you were last time, what's the first one? Let's kids talk. Let's kids talk. Awesome. Jessica's going to help me. Um, let's go ahead. What was the, the first one? Okay, second one. Good. Third one. Yeah, don't teach a lot of, don't give a lot of information or details. It just overwhelms people, right? Next one. Repetition. And that was the last one, correct? What was the last one? Oh, yeah. See what happens when I don't have my PowerPoint? I just go crazy. Okay. I am a visual person. You got it. You pegged me. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is called active learning. Use active learning. So what is active learning? Well, we're going to find out. I hope you're ready for this. So I want you to imagine right now I'm the children's pastor and you're the kids and you're playing along. Okay? Boom. Are you ready for it? Okay, boom. Guys. God desires to be near you. He wants to be near you. That's why he asked Moses to make the tabernacle so he could dwell among the people. And James says, draw near to God. And what? He will draw near unto you. So here's what I need for you to do. Back in the back toward my left, around the corner there, there are some items that I'm going to need for you to get. So I'm going to give you three directions, okay? One, I need you to get a partner. When I say go, you're going to get a partner. Two, you're going to get, I'll, I'll get it in just a second. Two, you're going to get one cup, one empty cup, and one cup full of popcorn. And then the third thing you're going to do is you're going to see two orange lines one of you, one of the partners is going to stand on one side and the other partner on the other side. Everybody understand? What's the first direction? Second thing? Yep. And third thing? Go for it. Okay. If you will have a seat. Thank you for participating and being good sports. Yeah. So that's why sometimes you practice to make sure that, right, that things like that don't happen. There you go. Okay. So let's get back. I got to refocus here. So talk to me. And I have, let's see. Ooh, there's, yeah, I will need this is good. Whew. I'll tell you what. I know that challenge. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. About four more. Boom, 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 boom. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Okay, awesome. Okay, nope, back there. Okay. So one of the things when you're, thank you for being patient. I'm sorry about that. Um, one of the things that you, when you're using active learning is really important to end the, the, the experience with questions because you can have a great time, like throwing popcorn. Yeah, you can imagine kids, right? Um, but if you don't connect it with the Bible, uh, you know, the scripture, the Bible lesson, then you, we haven't really done a whole lot. So a couple of things. I want you to do a pair share. What was it like playing this game when you were really far away from your partner? And how did you feel? That's important, the feeling. Two, how did it help once your partner was closer? 
And then three, how is this experience like or dislike our lesson today? And remember, we talked about when God, we want to, God wants to draw closer to us, okay? So I'm going to give you about 35 seconds, and if you would, talk to your elbow partner about those three things, okay? Go. So let's um, talk to me about what was it like playing the game when you were really far away, and how did you feel? Would anybody be willing to share? Yeah. <laughs> I love the word impossible. What else? Yes, that's difficult, frustrating. Anything else? Really? Okay, good. This is good. How did it help once your partner was closer? <laughs> yes, for those who didn't cheat, what? <laughs> Talk to me. It was much easier. Much easier? OK, what else? Cool. Anything else? OK. Do you, was it more, did you feel like it was more attainable? <laughs> you knew it, OK. And then how is this experience like or, dis, like or dislike our lesson today? about drawing closer to God. Any ideas? Awesome. That's good. Love it. Anybody else? Hmm. That is it. Ooh, I like it. Woohoo! She needs a microphone. All right. Yeah, that is awesome. Now, I will tell you that when you're doing this active learning experience, try to think of an activity you can do that involves every kid, not just some. Cause be, and there's nothing wrong with pulling a few kids up and doing a demonstration, but it's good to, to involve every kid. And then one of the most important parts is ask the intentional question. So I'm going to give you the two questions that I always ask, okay? So one of those questions is something like, how did you feel when? So pull the emotion out. How did you feel when you were far away from each other? Then the second question I always ask is, how is this like or dislike our lesson today? or the scripture that we learned today. Because see, now you're starting to tap into a higher cognitive level to get kids to start thinking about, okay, now how am I connecting this silly activity with God's word? And I promise you, most of you will never forget this activity because we've evoked emotion, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's been fun. It's active. You're a lot of you kinesthetic learners who are the learners who like to use their body. You just won't forget it. And I will, I'd like to encourage you, though, even though you ask the question to the kids about how this connects, be sure as the leader to make the connection. Because I can guarantee you the majority of kids are not going to be able to make that huge jump from activity to the Bible. And if you can clearly articulate the jump between the two, that will help them. As a matter of fact, I always write my statement down because it's so hard sometimes, like off the cuff, sometimes it's really difficult to make the connection between the activity and God's word. So write the statement down so that you and memorize it so it's really clear for the kids, okay? It's that time again. Can anybody tell me? Actually, let's do a pair share real quickly. Talk to your partner about the top six ways to make a lesson sticky. Six ways. One, two, three, four. You ready? Go.
That's what I mean. Correct. Yeah. All right. How many of you could right now stand up and say all six? How many feels really confident? Okay, what's the first one? Okay, what about this one? Attention span. Use pictures. One point. Don't complicate. Not too many details. What about this? Active learning. Yeah, like look at the hands making the brain. I know it's hard to see. And then this one, which is what we're doing right now, over and over and over and over again. Okay, next one. Number four, use object lessons. How many of you used an object lesson like in the last couple of weeks? Great, that's awesome. You know, I got to tell you, between kids' attention spans and sometimes how abstract the Bible is, teaching kids God's word can sometimes be like threading a needle. It is complicated. It can be hard. And so object lessons can take an abstract principle in God's word and make it very concrete. And here's why. Every kid has a shared context when you use an object lesson. So if you think about it, when you're up here talking or when I'm talking, the audience, they're actually pulling together images in their brain and thoughts in their brain, okay, when I describe something. Because all of you come from different backgrounds and different experiences, everybody's picture and thoughts in your brain are different. But when I pull out an object, like a cell phone, let's say, for my object lesson, and I talk about it, I describe it, guess what? It puts everyone on an even playing field. Everybody now can have the same context. So you will really want to, um, when you're doing this, practice, okay? You don't want to be bringing home a truth and then all of a sudden fumble with it, kind of like what I did back there, okay? And I had even practiced that in my office at work, but it didn't happen as, as well as I wanted, even though that's not an object lesson. The second thing is plan an alternative ending. How are you going to illustrate the Bible story if the object lesson doesn't work? Or if a kid says something opposite than you want them to say? So kind of be thinking through that if you can. I would also be sure that you describe the object. So how does it work? What is it? How does it work? What is it used for? Um, a couple years ago, I was in a children's, um, children's church setting, and um, the children's leader used a yard tool that was like I think my great-grandmother would have used. I didn't even know what it was, and unfortunately, the leader failed to, she said what it was, and she described a little bit about it, but because we didn't know how it functioned or how it worked, the connection was just so weak that the kids didn't even get it. It went, whoosh, you know, so try to use objects that kids are aware of, and if, you're, if you can, if you really want, find something that they don't know a lot about, do a really good job of describing it or showing a video of how it works or something. And then if you can, let kids experience it. Because the more senses that you can allow a kid to use when learning, the better off they are to remembering it. And then make the connection. Again, it's a really big jump to ask a kid to say, okay, what's the connection here? You have to be very specific and let them know. Hey, those of you who have used object lessons, where's a really good place or where are some places that you guys have found to uh, good object lessons, like ideas? Anybody? What? What? Okay. Yeah, Pinterest is an awesome place. Children's pastors, web or Facebook pages, any, anything else? Yes. Yeah. 
they do. Right. Good. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Jessica. That's awesome. Great. Okay, let's move on. The next one is show life application. So if we want kids to fall in love with Jesus and have their heart transformed, we know that information alone is not going to do it, right? There has to be an application. And one of the best ways to help kids apply the word of God to their life is to ask them questions, but specific questions. So we're actually going to do an activity. Um, and where is my box? Where is my box? Okay, here's my box. Okay, so I need you in groups of four. And here's the thing. How many people do? Ooh, let's see. Hopefully we have enough. I think I brought like 10 of these. So we're going to do what's called the question ball activity. And in here are four questions. As you unravel it, you're going to unravel it really gently. The first person will get the ball, they'll unravel, get the question, answer the question, talk about it. You're going to notice something about the questions. Um, and so kind of be, be thinking about similar similarities and differences and what you notice about them. So I think I've got like 10 of these balls. So maybe if there's 40 people that might work. So come on up. Get yourself, get one person per group, and come get your ball, please. Okay, so get in your groups. And go ahead and start unraveling. Get your question. Go ahead and talk about it. I'll give you about a minute to a minute and a half, okay? You may go. Carefully, carefully. Awesome. Yeah, you got the candy. Okay, guys, because of the sake of time, I'm so sorry, but we'll have to stop and kind of come back as a group, and we'll kind of process some of this together. So what did you guys notice about the questions? Anything that you notice? There's nothing off limits. There's candy with it. Okay, what? Oh, they got harder. What else? They're all about the same story. What else? So that's what I want to highlight today. Guys, there are good questions and there are not so great questions. Good questions are open-ended where they, they allow kids to really think and talk about. And you know how I can always tell an open-ended question is that there are, there's more than likely more than one answer. Closed-ended questions usually have one answer. There is absolutely nothing wrong with closed answers, closed answered questions. But if all we're asking are remembering questions, how are kids supposed to apply it to their life? You know what I mean? So we've got to ask, we've got to ask those open-ended questions. So for faith to become transformative, it must be applicable and relevant. So let's make sure that when we're asking those questions, we're going for the open-ended more so than, than just, and, and actually that really takes me to the next point, is find a balance. There's always a good balance between open-ended and closed-ended. 
And then last but not least with this one, you know, share ways when you were a kid, even if you have to make them up, okay? Share ways that um, to apply the lesson that to your life. So like when I was a kid, instead of being really general, so don't go out and tell kids, you know, you need to show God's love to people to, this week. Be, give them an example. Give them an example. Say, hey, when I was a kid, or you know what? I saw a kid the other day doing such and such by showing the love of Jesus. So be as specific as possible. Okay, moving on. What do we have for the first one? Really quickly. Let them talk. Next one. Next one. Yeah, application. Yeah, let them let uh, ask open-ended questions. Next one. Pictures. Object lesson. One point, not too many. Do an active lesson. Repetition. Okay, moving on. Number two, we're almost there. Engage their emotion. Now, unfortunately, the internet is not working, so I can't show you this um, uh, this video, which it's 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 pretty awesome because it it shows it it really makes you emotional after you watch it. So I I hate that we can't do that, but. Did you guys have fun when you were throwing popcorn at each other? So what researchers have found is that when we, um, when we do something that engages our emotion, it's like cement. Well, what do you mean? Well, when you make learning fun, social, um, you, or you're actually enhancing the learning process and the retention rate. So here's the key statement. Emotion is the secret sauce that helps things stick in our brains. Emotion. And I will tell you a sh something. A couple years ago, never had any problems with flying. A couple years ago, I was on a very long fright, flight back from Hawaii. Fright. Yeah, it was frightful. And there was tons of turbulence. The plane dropped. Then it went into a nosedive. Plane dropped, went into a nosedive. People were screaming. People were falling all over the place. It was the, one of the most traumatic experiences I've ever had in my life. Never had any problems before. I was, I was screaming. I was crying. My friend was too. After that, I, I, I hate this, but that emotion, that feeling has never left me. And every single time I get on a plane, as soon as there's turbulence, my heart rate goes up. I hold on to the chair. I, I go white. My husband thinks it's hilarious. You know, he's like, Alicia, you're not going to die. Oh, yeah, I'm going to die. You know, but that emotion has got a hold of me and it won't let me go. And that experience, because that experience was tied to emotion, I can't let it go. And so when you can give kids an emotional experience, and this is really where the next point comes in with the Holy Spirit guiding and leading. That's the secret sauce right there. Okay? So, um, well, are we going to do this? Okay. Create a positive environment. Um, plan, plan the learning experiences that integrate emotion. So just like the active learning, usually active learning and emotion go together. Okay? And then make sure you debrief with questions, just like we talked about before. So doing an activity, having the emotion, talk about it. Okay? All right, last but not least, we're almost done, is the most important of all. It's giving room for the Holy Spirit to speak. You know, I don't know about you, but as a teacher... Um, I have felt a lot of pressure to make sure that my lesson has to be perfect. Everything, you know, I've got to do all these things, even though what we've talked about, because I've got to impart the knowledge to these kids, this biblical truth. I am the one, you know what? It's not your responsibility in one way. What if we stepped out of the teacher role and really thought about ourselves as a facilitator and let the Holy Spirit be the teacher. 
So how many times in our lessons do we stop and we say, you know what, guys, after we've heard everything we've heard today, let's stop. Let's pray. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to come and speak to us. What is he saying to your heart? How is he leading you? How is he guiding you? Because you know what? We can do all nine of these things and we can have fun. We can repeat. But if the Holy Spirit, if we don't give him space to speak, it's all in vain. And so I would say, encourage you, teach kids to recognize his voice. What does it mean to hear from the Holy Spirit? What does that mean? It might be when I'm reading my Bible, something comes out at me. It might be a gut feeling. And of course, you always have to be careful, but it's worth talking to kids about. It might be a gut feeling. It might be a thought. It might be someone coming up to me and saying something. It might be a pastor saying something over the pulpit. You know, teach kids. I thought it was interesting. In Sam, Remember Samuel? God spoke to him. Did he know who God was? Did he know who the voice was? No. So we got to teach kids. And the last thing is, I encourage you, create a time for kids to for create space for the Holy Spirit to really work and move in your lesson. Because he is the one that can get into those kids' hearts and really speak to them. We really can't in a way. It's his job. It's his responsibility. In closing, um, last but not least, can you model this? Can you, when you go back, talk to kids and say, guys, after we've prayed, I really feel like the Lord impressed upon my heart such and such. Just like you would model good behavior for your kids, your, you know, biological kids if you have them. Model the same behavior so that kids can start recognizing, oh, the Holy Spirit is speaking to my teacher. The Holy Spirit speaks to me. And you know what's awesome? When those kids get outside of the walls of your children's church or your classroom, they start to think, oh, the Holy Spirit can guide and lead me outside these walls. And that is really the most powerful and awesome thing of all. For the Holy Spirit to dwell and to lead them no matter where they are. So, give room for the Holy Spirit. Okay, is there someone in here who can name all ten? Because I have a Fire Bible devotional for you. Come on up. Or just say it out loud. Oh, Jessica, I'm sorry. I was calling on the girlfriend. (laughs) What is your name? Noah, go for it. Okay. Ooh, hold on. <coughs> Hang with me. <laughs> really, 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 really fast. Hopefully my computer won't clog up on me. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, is that it? All right. Go for it. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go down to the bottom. Go down to the bottom. Thank you. Okay, I'm not touching this thing. Go for it. Help her out, guys. And what was this one at the top? Mm. Oh, she said pictures. And what was the one at the bottom? Good job. Give her a hand. Good job.
Can you pass that back to her? Um, before we leave today, I just want to pray with you, and I want to thank you for coming. I hope you've been refreshed and enjoyed this class. Um, I also want to let you know, for those of you who enjoyed what we did today, um, My Healthy Church has created a new product, a children's church called True Fire. If you're interested, come and see me at the booth. And I think, oh, one last thing. It's been known, someone's been known to say, it takes seven miles for a big ship to turn around in the ocean. Change takes time. But if you can adopt even one of these top ten things, it makes a huge impact on kids. So I challenge you, take baby steps, do one at a time, maybe for a month, and then you incorporate another thing in a month, then another thing. Don't go too fast, okay? Let's, let me pray for you. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for these people sitting in this room and for who they are, for what they're doing for you. We just ask, Lord, right now, I just ask you to please put a special anointing over them. You see their desire to serve kids and for kids to fall in love with you. And I just ask you, will you give them strength? Will you give them wisdom? Will you comfort them? Will you just be with them and guide them? And with the power of the Holy Spirit, just lead and guide them to things that they can do with working with kids that will make an eternal difference. We thank you for being such a good, good father to us. It's just who you are. We love you and we praise you. In your precious name we pray, amen. If you want the PowerPoint, email me and I'd be happy to give it to you. Have a good day, guys.